Salt Lake City, and welcome to Reimagining Chapel. I am so glad you are joining us today. Let's begin by lighting our chalice. Do you have one at home? I sure hope you do. Go grab it and light yours with me. Symbol of light. Symbol of knowledge. Symbol of hope. Symbol of freedom. We light this chalice as a symbol of our faith. Here we gather to celebrate hope and the infinite possibilities of love. Happy June. I am so glad you all took the time to join me. Now remember, June is Pride Month. Pride Month is when we celebrate the LGBTQAI members and families in all our communities. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for making our communities more inclusive, more diverse, more filled with love, which you know is what we're all about here at the First Unitarian Church. Speaking of events filled with love, Besides Pride, we have something coming up that is so exciting, and I can't wait for you all to hear about it. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. We are having a live outdoor worship service. We're going to do it on June 20th. It will be our flower communion and our bridging service for our seniors who are moving on to high, to, not high school, our seniors in high school who are moving on to college and other career opportunities. I am so excited for this event. I am so excited for us to be in community together. Now, we've all been used to being virtual though, and you may not be ready to be with us yet. Completely okay. We are going to live stream the service so you can join us wherever you are in the whole great big wide world. Now, the worship service will not be on our campus. We just don't have enough outdoor spaces. So we are going to our neighbors at the McGillis School, which is right across the street, and we're going to be on their soccer field. Now, this is BYOC, bring your own chair or blanket. If you want to bring a pop-up shelter, you can do that too. Just be prepared to be sitting towards the back. And we are excited to have people there. Now, if you need help getting a chair or need some kind of accommodation, totally great. Just let Reverend Monica or myself or our front office know, and we can help make sure that we have what you need in order to participate with us and be successful. It should be a wonderful morning filled with community, and love our seniors in our high school and flowers. I just cannot wait for this kind of love to be with one another. Now, let's take a minute and share our joys and concerns with one another. I'm gonna start with my joy. This afternoon, when I pulled up to church, do you know what I saw? I saw a row of rainbow flags right in front of our sign. Look, here's the picture. Look at these rainbow flags, filled with love, filling our, our community. I was so happy to see them there. Now, what's been your joy lately? What are you excited about? Is it the end of the school year? Has something else happened recently that maybe is heavy on your heart? Share that with somebody too. I'll be right here when you're ready after you've shared. for sharing your joys and concerns with your people. While I can't wait to hear them in person, I'm glad we still have the people in our homes and our lives that can hear us and hear our thoughts and prayers, hear our hopes and our dreams and what's on our hearts. It's so important. All right. Miss Lissa has a UU of the week for us that I can't wait to hear about. I can't wait till we are all back in person. And you can see our whole wall is filled up with all our new UUs. It's going to be quite the sight. All right. Thank you, Lissa. Hi, I'm Lissa Lander, the Religious Education Assistant at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City. Welcome to this Pride edition of UU of the Week. 
Barbara Peskin was the first out lesbian minister of religious education and later a co-senior minister with her partner, Ann Tyndall, to be called by a UU congregation. So even though the UUA amended its hiring practices in 1970 to make this possible, it still took until 1980 for the first openly gay ministers to be officially called. And then Barbara was called in 1984. Barbara Peskin, who was born in 1946, first found the Unitarian Church when she and her father were looking for a choir. They liked the liberal theology at the Unitarian Universalist Church in Akron, Ohio, but it was the care the congregation showed to Barbara and her father when he became increasingly ill that made that church feel like home to them. In 1977, Barbara heard the call to ministry and was accepted at the Star King School of Ministry in Berkeley, California. Barbara Peskin was then called, after she finished her degree, by Beacon Unitarian Church in Oak Park, Illinois in 1984, making her the first out lesbian called to a ministerial position at a UU church. In 1988, she and her partner, Ann Tyndall, were called as co-senior ministers in Connecticut. Barbara and her partner later worked at the UUA, where they developed the program for LGBTQ welcoming congregations. This program has helped UU churches learn about LGBTQ communities and work toward becoming truly safe and welcoming spaces. Our own First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City is an LGBTQ welcoming community. Barbara Peskin retired after 27 years in the ministry. She was a pioneer, a leader, an advocate for queer UU ministers. She was also a poet. And this poem, which is number 680 in our hymnal, Singing the Living Tradition, is called Because of Those Who Came Before Us. Because of those who came before, we are, in spite of their failings, we believe because of and in spite of the horizons of their vision, we too dream. Let us go remembering to praise, to live in the moment, to love mightily, to bow to the mystery. When reflecting upon her years as a UU minister, Barbara said, Somewhere along that long curve, I am forming a unified field theory of our faith and a corollary question. Before the six sources and the seven principles, I posit this one rule. When you enter the doors of our faith, you may not lock them after you. You may not close them against others who may come nor against what new promptings may knock at the door of your own heart. The question is, what are we for? We, ministers, lay people, Unitarian Universalists, humanists, theists, feminists, human beings with this precious human birth, what are we for? So I agree. Let us not lock the doors of our faith to new ideas or to growth. We have been on a path toward doing better for a long time, and it took years of demanding change for LGBTQ ministers to find their place in our churches. We are still on that journey as a faith organization and as a country, but things are getting better every day. And I am so happy to add Barbara Peskin to our UU of the Week collection. Let's see what's inside our wonder box. Oh, it's a pin with my pronouns, she, her. In the United States, we use pronouns like she, her, he, him, and they, them to describe ourselves and other people. One thing we've talked about a lot this year is that as people, it's normal to change over time. Our bodies change and grow, our opinions change. Think about how many different colors you have had over the years. And our beliefs change. 
This is all normal. Sometimes, for some people, their gender identity changes over their lifetime as well. Now, what do I mean when I say gender identity? A good definition from an author we'll hear from later, Teresa Thorne, is this. Gender identity is who you feel within, like within yourself, whether you feel like a boy, a girl, or some combination of boy or girl or something else. Your gender identity is who you know yourself to be. It might match your, your sex assigned at birth, or it might not. Let's learn a little bit more about gender identity in Teresa's book, It Feels Good to Be Yourself. It Feels Good to Be Yourself, a book about gender identity, written by Teresa Thorne, illustrated by Noah Gringney. This is Ruthie. She's a transgender girl. That means when she was born, everyone thought she was a boy until she grew a little older, old enough to tell everyone that she's actually a girl. Girl is Ruthie's gender identity. This is Ruthie's brother, Xavier. Xavier is a cisgendered boy. That means when Xavier was born, everyone thought he was a boy. And as he grew older, it turned out everyone was right. He is a boy. Boy is Xavier's gender identity. There are so many different ways to be a boy or a girl, too many to fit in a book. But not everyone feels like either a boy or a girl. Non-binary is a helpful word that can describe a kid who doesn't feel exactly like a boy or a girl. This is Ruthie's friend, Alex. Alex is both a boy and a girl. When Alex was born, everyone thought Alex was a girl, but Alex is both boy and girl. This is Alex's gender identity. This is Alex's friend, JJ. JJ is neither a boy nor a girl. Ever since JJ was very little, they never felt exactly like a boy or a girl. They just felt like themselves. This is JJ's gender identity. Alex and JJ are both non-binary. Just like there are many different ways to be a boy or a girl, there are many different ways to be non-binary. Too many to fit into a book. Some kids don't feel exactly like a boy or a girl. They feel like neither. Some kids feel that their gendered identity isn't always the same. It's often changing. And even with all these possible ways to be, some kids don't feel any of the words they know fit them exactly right. There are a never-ending number of ways to be yourself in the world. Whether you feel like a boy, a girl, both, or neither, or if you describe yourself another way, that is your gender identity. Your gender identity might match what people thought when you were born, or it might not. See, when you were born, you couldn't tell people who you were or how you felt. They looked at you and made a guess. Maybe they got it right, maybe they got it wrong. What a baby's body looks like when they're born can be a clue to what the baby's gender will be, but not always. When people guess wrong, it's okay to let them know. Ruthie was five when she told her parents, I know you think I'm a boy, but really, I feel like a girl. Oops, Ruthie was a girl all along. They just didn't know it at first. When people guess right, it's also okay to let them know. Xavier was three and a half when he told his family, I'm a boy, I like being a boy. You might feel like a boy, you might feel like a girl, you might feel like both boy and girl, or like neither. You might feel like your gender changes from day to day or from year to year. You might feel that none of these words describes you perfectly. You might not be sure yet. Maybe you're still figuring it out. Your feelings about your gender are real. Listen to your heart. No matter what your gender identity is, you are okay exactly the way you are. And you are loved. It feels good to be yourself, doesn't it? I want to emphasize the very last part of the book 
as the values that we uphold here at First Unitarian Church. Your feelings about your gender are real. Listen to your heart. No matter what your gender identity is, you are okay exactly the way you are. And you are loved. We support you however you decide to express your gender identity. Our first and second principles call us to move towards love, move towards justice for all, including and especially our friends in the LGBTQAI community. You are valued and important members of our community. Thank you for choosing to be here. You will always have a place at First Unitarian Church. Thank you for joining us for Reimagining Chapel. Remember, we will have a live outdoor worship service in a few weeks on June 20th at 10 a.m. Look in our newsletters for more information about joining us. Until then, though, let's lead with love and heart out. Bye, bye, people have a say.